Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Tax Free Living, where I teach entrepreneurs just like you how to live tax free. Now we're getting into the 2023 tax season, so I want to give you all some gems, some some new strategies because you're trying to save on taxes, right? You're trying to save on taxes, so that's what I'm here for. Don't worry, I got you. Before we get into today's episode, please go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If I've been giving you value, if you've been getting amazing um, information from this channel, we got some major things coming up on a, on this Melanin Money channel, guys. This segment is just going to be one of the many segments we're going to be having on this channel to bring you financial information and to help you on your journey to becoming a melanin millionaire so what topic do i have for you today right i know you saw the thumbnail right what topic do i have for you today so today's topic is going to be how to write off your rent on your taxes rent or your mortgage is usually people's number one expense. What if you can eliminate a portion of this expense by writing it off on your taxes? Wouldn't that be crazy? Like, wouldn't that be crazy? So I'm gonna give you the ins and outs on exactly how you can do this and be able to write off a portion of your rent on your taxes to obviously lower your tax bill and kind of get the IRS to help pay some of your rent, right? That wouldn't be bad. Let's get into today's topic, guys. So the way that we are going to write off our rent is through taking advantage of the home office deduction. The home office deduction is a deduction that a lot of accountants and tax preparers are telling their clients to stay away from. And it doesn't make any sense to me. Well, it makes sense to me, but they should not be advising that. Here's the issue, okay? The home office deduction used to be a red flag deduction when it came to the IRS, right? If you put an amount in the home office deduction line item on your tax return, it increased your chances of an audit because the IRS was cracking down on people trying to manipulate the rule and deduct portions of their living expenses. But that was back in the day. The reason that it's not, it's no longer a red flag deduction today is because this thing called COVID happened, right? And COVID forced 99% of the world to work from home. So whether you are an employee, whether you are a business owner, most people ended up working from home during that period when COVID was over, well, I guess when it was over, a lot of people continue to work from home. And most people during that time frame ended up building a home office setup so that they can successfully work from home. So COVID is one thing, but we also have all these businesses that are now doing business solely online because we don't have to go into offices anymore. We don't have to go meet with our clients. Like my accounting practice was 100% Zoom. People are getting to a, a virtual space. So I say all that to say the IRS knows that guys. The IRS knows that more Americans right now are working from home than any other time in history. So with that being said and with that being known, the home office deduction is no longer a red flag deduction. For those of you who are a CPA told you that you should be wary of the uh, home office deduction or you, sh or you shouldn't take the home office deduction, that was then. This is now. Now in this day and age, the IRS fully understands that a lot of people are working from home and they're okay with you taking the home office deduction correctly. Okay, correctly. So now with that being said, how do we take the home office deduction correctly so we're able to get a deduction for our living expenses? There are two ways that you can take the home office deduction. Okay, there's a simplified method and then there is the actual method. And let me just say this, guys. Anytime the IRS gives you two methods to do something, the easier method is going to prompt you less tax savings. If you take the easy route, it will cost you tax savings in the long run because the IRS knows that people are lazy. The IRS knows that Americans are lazy. If they give them an easy way to do something, they'll most likely do it, but the easy way doesn't yield the most tax savings. The simplified method says this. If you have a dedicated space where you work from home, as you can see, I have this dedicated office, this dedicated content studio. So if you have a dedicated space that you solely work from, you're able to write off the area and the expenses related to that area on your taxes. So when it comes to the simplified method, the IRS says, hey, take the square footage of that. So take the length times the width, and I want you to multiply it by five. If the square footage of your home office is 
300 square feet and so 300 times five that's 1500 $1,500 you would get a $1,500 tax deduction for the year related to your home office now I don't know about y'all but $1,500 is not a lot of money that is not a big deduction not only that if you take the simplified method the max you can take is a $1,500 deduction. Even if your home office was 500 square feet, you still can't take a deduction over $1,500. Not only is it not a big expense, but it also caps you at a certain number. So now you're having all these expenses related to your home office, but you only can take off, you only can write off $1,500 worth of the area, right? So that's the simplified method. Again, it's okay, but it's not the best when it comes to tax savings. So now we have the actual method. Now this is a little bit harder. It's gonna take a little bit more calculations, but it's going to lead to a lot more tax savings. So how do we calculate our home office deduction using the actual method? So we wanna get the square footage of this home office area. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna get the square footage for our entire home or our entire apartment, okay? Once we have these two measurements, we have to do a little bit of math. Okay, don't be scared guys, we're gonna do a little bit of math. So you're gonna take the square footage of your office and divide it by the square footage of your entire home or apartment. So let's say for ease of use, let's say we have a home office that has 250 square feet, but then our apartment is a thousand square feet. So we take 250 and divide it by a thousand. Now for all of y'all doing math out there, everybody should have got to 25%. Right, 0.25 should have been the answer. Everybody should be arrived at this 25% answer, okay? That 25% is the business use of our home. So 25% of our home is looked at in the IRS as business use. So now once we have this business usage number, we have to add up all of the expenses that it takes monthly to live in this apartment. So your rent, plus your utilities, plus your electricity, plus your sewer, plus your water, you add up all the expenses that it costs you to live in that dwelling monthly. So let's say it costs you $4,000 per month to live in your apartment. Now, you're gonna take that $4,000 per month, you're gonna multiply it by the business use. So 4,000 times 25% is $1,000. $1,000 of that $4,000 you pay rent is related to your business. So the IRS will allow you to get a $1,000 per month tax deduction for working from home. I'm gonna say that again. The IRS will be willing to give you a $1,000 per month tax deduction in this case for working from home. So now, what if we have the home office for 12 months? We take 1,000 times 12, that means we get a $12,000 tax deduction for working from the crib. That's crazy. So again, remember with a simplified method, if our home office was 250 square feet, we would take 250 and multiply it by five. That would be our max deduction. But now with the actual method, we take this 250 square feet divided by a thousand by the square footage of our home office. We take our business use percentage and multiply it by our monthly rent. In our case, we got $1,000 per month. And now we got $1,000 per month tax deduction multiplied by 12. That is a $12,000 tax deduction. That's almost a, let's see, let's see, let's see, what, the, let's see what the difference would be. Let's do some math, y'all. So if you did the simplified method, your home office deduction would have been 1,250. But by taking the actual method, your home office deduction is $12,000. You would have missed out on over $10,000 in tax deductions by doing the simplified method over the actual method. That's why I tell you guys, when anytime the IRS gives you two ways to do something, a harder method is usually going to yield to more tax savings. But guys, this is an amazing deduction. I, I don't want you all to miss this because you have the home office. You pay for the home office. You work it from home. You're operating your business. Why not get a tax deduction for doing so as well? And for those of you at home asking, the same thing qualifies for if you own a home, right? You would take the home office percentage, you will multiply it by all the expenses related to your living situation. So if you own a home, you will add up your mortgage interest, you add up your HOA fees, your homeowner's insurance, your property taxes, your utilities, you add all those expenses up throughout the year and then you will multiply it by your business use percentage and that would be the deduction that you get for writing off your home office if you own the home as well. So you can do this if you rent, you can also do this if you own, but don't miss out on this tax deduction. Matter of fact, do me a favor guys, in the comments below, let me know how much your yearly tax deduction is going to be for your home office. I want to know. I want you guys to do the math. I want you guys to do the work so that you can know that 
you know, for the 2022 tax season, I want you adding this home office deduction to your 2022 tax return. So let me know what that number is in the comments, guys. And let me know if you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends. We're here every single Tuesday, tax-free Tuesdays. We haven't missed a week yet. I don't plan on missing one anytime soon. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.